Hello lovely people. Uh, today I am going through this little package right here. This is the Australis Bestsellers Vault Kit or it's called The Vault. Um, this is something that I saw in the lead up to Christmas. It was at Big W. I didn't see it in the price lines I went into so I'm not sure if they have it but they might have it in different ones. But anyhow, I was on the lookout for little gift packs because Christmas always has some really good ones around. Good way to try products and to sample them without actually committing to buying the full size or paying the full price. So, um, Australis I actually haven't bought stuff from since I was probably 14, so 10 years ago. <laughs> um, which is weird because I love Australis, I see their stuff all the time and I always am keen to try their stuff, I just never do. So when I saw this one, I was like, cool, let's try this out, this will be fun. Um, I really love the packaging, it definitely caught my eye. Uh, points to Australis for doing something different. Um, while I love the marble gold and white look, everybody's doing it, or rose gold I should say. Um, so it was nice to see something different that stood out. I love the black and the little metallic gold, it's really cool. Uh, this is a good all-rounder kit as well. I was surprised how balanced it was. A lot of kits tend to focus around eyes or lips or something, but this is a really good all-rounder. You've got um, the, everything from a primer to a setting powder, contour kit, eye products, lip products, and a setting spray as well, which is incredible. So um, I actually did film a first impressions of this a few weeks ago before Christmas. However, um, it didn't work out so well. <laughs> And I was just going to do it anyway because I wanted to be honest, but I thought, well, I want to give them a chance to prove themselves because I think I expected too much from them to start with. So after getting to know these products a little bit better, I could give a more honest review today. So instead of a first impressions, this is more like a, here's what I think at this point in time after using it for a little while and what my recommendations are. Um, this is still in stores at the moment. Um, it should be for a little while. And what I do love about this is that these products aren't unique to this package, as in these are their best sellers, these are permanent line products. So they're always there and if there's only some things or one thing that you like from this, then you can get just that without getting the whole set. Um, and they're products that'll be around for a long time. So if you're keen to know a little bit more about these products, then keep on watching as I put together this face using these products. So to start off we're going to use the primer that comes in the pack, which is this one here. It doesn't really state that it's for anything in particular, it just says the original primer. Um, it says that it prevents foundation fading, smooths and refines and moisturising. Uh, and it's also silicone free if that's important for you. So we'll start off by just putting that all over the face like you normally would. Ooh. The consistency is quite different to um, normal primers that I use. This feels quite... not even sure what it reminds me of. It doesn't have that slick feel that um, primers have, and that will be because there's no silicone. But it also doesn't have that kind of really smooth... Um, that really smooth texture that most um, primers have. It kind of just feels more like a moisturizing lotion. Um, maybe a bit thicker than that, so it's really it's quite watery. Um, so I think this would be good if you had dry skin. Uh, however, if you've got oily skin, this may not be it. Well, I can tell you it probably won't be enough for your skin. Um, Right, so that's dried pretty quickly. My skin doesn't feel much smoother than normal, but it does feel more hydrated. So I would call that a hydrating primer, if that's something you're looking for. Uh, so next I'm just going to put on some foundation. I'm just going to skip past this bit, but I'm keeping in the drugstore theme. And I'm going to use the Maybelline Matte and Paula, so I'll just quickly put that on now. Next up I'm just going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer um, under eyes and I'll just skip through this one as well. Okay so to set 
the foundation and the concealer. I'm just going to use the setting powder that comes in the pack. It's called the Ready Set Go Finishing Powder. So I believe this is a translucent one. Yes, this is in translucent, so any skin type can use it, or skin colour I should say. And I'm just going to get a fluffy brush and put that um, all over my face, particularly under my under eyes to make sure that the makeup's set. I'm not putting too much because I'm not really trying to mattify my face, I just want it to be set. Oh, it's got a really nice smell to it actually, which, um, not that powders tend to smell bad, but they don't really smell nice. <laughs> But this is actually really, um, it's a really nice scent and it feels really fine as well, which for a drugstore powder is really good. Usually they tend to be a bit cakey, but this is a really nice texture actually. Also, while I'm doing my forehead here, um, here's a top tip that I've learned because I have a fringe that I tend to put a lot more powder on my forehead because I do tend to sweat there, particularly in the summer, and I find that um, by putting a lot of powder on there, it actually stops my fringe from sticking to the sweat and getting all bitty and greasy, which, you know, it's really bad look, particularly if you've got a full fringe as well. Um, if you just put extra powder on your forehead, you'll um, keep it nice and clean all throughout the day. I'm quite impressed with that actually. It looks really nice, it looks really natural. Um, it's done a good job of blurring my fine lines, which the camera's not really picking up much of those kind of imperfections anyway, but it's definitely helped make my skin look a lot smoother, which is really good. And in terms of texture, my skin feels really soft, which is exactly what you'd want from a finishing powder. So next I'm gonna move on to the contouring and highlighting kit. It's called the Take Me On Tour kit, Looks, whoop, whoop. which looks like this, I don't know if you can quite see it. Um, I've always been a bit skeptical of these little contouring kits just because the shades are usually a little bit off, so I'm interested to see how this goes with my skin tone. Uh, being pale, they tend to be quite orange or on the orange side, so I'll just show you what it looks like on the inside as well. So we've got a banana powder here which is good for highlighting and then what looks like a different type of highlighting shade there doesn't really say on the back what that is and then obviously a contour shade so this I'd use for under for my under eye area and this is like a highlighter on your cheekbones and then this one is the contour for underneath your cheekbones um, I will also mention before getting this Australis kit, uh, I never used a banana powder because I assumed that because my skin's so pale that it would end up looking really yellow under my under eyes. But then I tried this the last time I filmed this video and discovered that it actually didn't make me look yellow, it just looked really good. It had much better coverage than normal setting powder. So uh, I'm yet to use it a little bit more, but so far I think I'm a convert to the whole banana powder thing. So I'll start off by using that. Even though we've already set my under eyes, this is just going to illuminate this whole area and make it seem brighter. Uh, next, I'm going to use the highlighting shade in it, which looks like a peachy, pinky kind of tone. So I'm just going to apply that on my cheekbones with this fan brush here. I'm actually quite surprised by that. I thought that like to look at it and to swatch it it looks like it's not very shiny at all so I thought it wouldn't really reflect much which on camera you can't really see it it's not mind-blowing but in real life as I look in the mirror it's shining back quite a lot like more than what you'd expect from looking at the pan itself 
So it just goes to show you've got to try things. You can't just assume from a swatch what it'll do. Like, I don't know if you can, you can almost just see it there on my cheekbone, which for something which in the pan looks like it's just a blush or something, not shimmery at all. That's quite surprising. I'm quite pleased with that. And so to finish that off, I'm just going to contour as well under my cheekbones using the darker shade in that little kit there. Again, I'm quite impressed. Um, usually when it comes to drugstore or cheaper uh, contour products, they tend to not have very much pigment, so when you put it on, you can't even see it on your skin. Maybe it helps that I've got very pale skin and so it doesn't take much to show, but you can see there, that's quite a good contour for something that's still quite light in colour uh, and only costs a few dollars. So. Yeah, this whole little kit right here surprised me a lot. That did a lot better than I expected it to. So there you go. Um, let's see. Next up, I'm going to go with the eyeshadow that comes in the kit, which is one of their Metallics eyeshadows. So that's the eyeshadow there. I'll just take it off. It's a really nice champagne -y gold colour. And it's quite wet in texture. You can kind of see... It's more of a mousse than a powder, so I'm not sure the best way to apply this. I might just start with my ring finger first. And if that doesn't work, I've got a brush here instead. So I'm just going to rub that all over the lid like a little wash. And see how that goes. Right, so it's a bit more sparse than I expected. It's like instead of being as compact and foiled like it is in the pan, it kind of spreads out to an even glitter all over the... or um, A sparkle is probably a better word than a glitter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little dense brush like this and try it on the other eye and just see if that works any better. It's a really awkward texture actually, I don't know if you can see as I dab, it just, the whole thing squelches a bit. <laughs> So yeah, the brush isn't really picking that up at all. It's similar to the Colourpop ones, because it's a mousse texture, it is best applied with fingers. So I'll just try that again with my ring finger and make sure, oh, I'll at least try to do it neatly. There we go. That worked much better than last time. I think maybe I just didn't get enough on my finger on my other eye, so I'll just go back in on this one and smear it over the lid. And I think what I'm going to do, while this looks nice just as a wash over the lid, I'm just going to add some dimension to my eyes. And what I'm going to do is... Let's see, I'm going to get that contour kit from before and get the contour shade, the darker shade. And just with a fluffy brush, it's not a blending brush but it'll do. I'm just going to go in, tap off the excess and just shape out my crease.
gonna be gay. Cool. So what seemed like a very daytime look before is all of a sudden much more professional looking and it's a little bit more glam and defined just by adding that contour shade in the crease. So it's up to you whether you want to do that. I just thought, hey, it's there, why not? Um, on to the next thing. The next thing in the pack is the liquid eyeliner. Oh, if I can get it out. Okay, so it doesn't really have any particular name, I don't think. It just says black liquid eyeliner and it looks like this. So I'm going to quickly apply this off screen because I'm very clumsy with how I apply my eyeliner and I'm not at a stage where I feel comfortable um, having people watch me do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly do this off camera and let you know how I went. It's been a long time since I've used this kind of liner before where it's on the tip. Usually I just use gel liners. Um, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so not bad, not great. <laughs> um, Given that I haven't done liner with this kind of applicator in about a decade, not a bad effort. Um, my wings are a little bit wonky, but apart from that, um, it went on smooth. It was quite easy to use. Um, however, the pigmentation was quite uh, weak, I guess. It was very light, very grey. Um, doesn't really have that dark black kind of line, but really good if you're starting out and you're not very confident <laughs> with doing wing liner so with this one it rubs off quite easily as well so not something to last all day but if you're learning how to do stuff uh, I would definitely um, I would definitely recommend it although what I did find as I was applying it is that the eyeshadow I've put on before wasn't quite set it was still quite wet so it was moving around a lot as I was trying to put this on so um, I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if I just had to let the eyeshadow set for longer or if it just doesn't and it has quite wet finish. I'm not sure because it still seems a bit wet even though it's, although it is quite sweaty today. So who knows, um, there might be a way around that in terms of what base you use underneath it. Maybe it's better as a topper over the top. Um, but yeah, that went okay, so I'm going to move on. And next, I'm just going to quickly put on some mascara and my brows just to finish off the eye look since there's nothing else for eyes in the pack. I'm just going to continue with the Maybelline theme and use this pumped up mascara. And for my brows, I'm just going to use the L'Oreal Brow, the Brow Artist Genius Kit as well. Okay, so eyelashes and brows are done. I uh, didn't bother showing you because it's the same old thing. However, on a side note, if you do want to see my brow routine, just leave a comment below. I can make a separate video for that. However, for today, I'm going to move right on to the next thing, which is um, one of the uh, Velour Lips Matte Lip Creams. I've seen these in Priceline for a very long time. I've seen a lot of Instagram posts about them and I've been wanting to buy them but haven't gotten around to it yet. So I was super excited to see that this came in the pack as well so I could give it a go. It's a nice deep berry colour which is perfect for this time of year or in winter which is a separate time if you're here in Australia. Uh, so I'll just quickly put that on. Oh, it smells delightful. It's like I was expecting vanilla because most things have that sweet vanilla smell but it's like berries. It tastes like... It tastes like... <laughs> Smells like wild berries, it's delicious. All right. I forgot how hard it is to go in straight with a dark color um, without doing lip liner first. <laughs> Definitely testing my skills here. Um, the texture is quite dry even putting it on it's not like it's definitely a matte lip you know usually matte lips kind of go on wet and then set dry this is very dry to begin with um, putting it on it's like a very um, it's really soft it's really smooth but it is a bit of like a paste um, so 
Uh, obviously a bit more difficult with a darker colour like this because any little mistake you can see a lot easier. But I really like it. It feels really comfortable. It doesn't feel dry or cracky at all. It doesn't feel thick. Um, I don't know how the pigmentation would be for a lighter colour, but this one's really nice. I really love it. I could wear this every day, no problem. <laughs> so really pleased with that one. And so lastly, to finish off the pack, the last thing here is the finishing spray. If I can get it out of the box. Here we go. So it's called the Makeup Finishing Spritz. It sets makeup for all day wear. It's got aloe vera and rose water in it. I've seen these in the shops, uh, the larger size. This is just the small sample version. The, um, the normal ones are a much taller bottle. So we'll just give that a go. Just spritz my face to finish it off. Oh, except the pump isn't working. Oh, there we go. Okay, just got to press harder. All right. Oh, that's lovely. You can smell the rose water. <laughs> so a little bit hard to press the little button at the top because it is quite cheap packaging. Um, but once you get it going, it's great. Um, it smells really nice. Uh, it's sprayed well as well. Um, that's, I mean, that's the key difference between high-end products and cheaper products is the fact that the cheaper brands tend to not spend as much on the packaging, which I like. I'd rather pay for the product and not just the packaging it comes in. Um, so obviously there are some cons that come with that. Uh, however, if the product's good, I don't really care. So I'm just waiting for that to set. Uh, so obviously um, with a setting spray you can't really test it at the time. Uh, so I actually have tested it prior to making this video and found that uh, it's still not as good as other finishing sprays. It's good as a starter it will help for a little bit but not for all day <laughs> not for all day and not even a full event I think if you're going out for lunch or something small then sure it's it's good it's a nice um, it's a nice way to freshen up your face and to make sure it doesn't look too cakey but in terms of setting makeup so it lasts all day you're better off going with other brands so that's that's all there is to it um, as a final wrap up uh, I think it's a bit hit and miss. Uh, there are some products I love, some that I don't. I would definitely get the lip products again, the Velour Lips. I love the contouring and highlighting kit. I cannot believe how much that surprised me. It still doesn't compare to say a high-end kit, like that's definitely better. But considering how cheap this is, it did a really good job. I wouldn't use a primer again, it doesn't suit my skin type. If you've got dry skin, maybe you'd love it, but for me it doesn't really work. The liquid eyeliner is just too thin for me, it just doesn't stay long enough. Same with the eyeshadow, it looks beautiful in the pan, it's gorgeous, but on my oily skin, my oily lids I should say, it just smears around, it's still not setting, which is just not my vibe. <laughs> if you're the kind of person who likes really dewy makeup that's kind of on the wet side, then sure, go for it, it's beautiful. But I personally am matte all the way, so that's not something I would repurchase. Uh, I would certainly recommend this as a starter kit um, for someone who's maybe in their early teens and is just starting out with makeup. It's a great all-rounder set that is inexpensive and you can kind of play around with and won't, um, won't make too much of a mess of your face. I think that's the problem with better makeup is that it is made to last and so if you make a mistake it's really hard to get rid of. At least with this stuff you can wipe it off no problem. So that's really good if you're a little bit younger or just starting out. I'd love to know what you guys think about these products. These have been around for quite some time and I've got some friends who have used some of these products before and have already got their own opinion. So I'd love to hear from you about what you think because I think that's really fun just to share different opinions. Next time I'll be continuing my little series on makeup for beginners and understanding makeup products and what they're for. So we've already done two videos. There was the base one and the eye products one. So next time will be all about lips and then I'll just keep going with that series from there. If you're interested in learning about that, then please subscribe. Uh, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you.